it really works not just as a passing chord, but as a landing chord. So if we were to actually play the tune again, hear how lovely that is? In this video, I'm gonna give you one chord that could change your life. Hey, it's Paul Toby here from jazzmental.com. Thanks for joining me for another one of my tutorials. This chord is a chord that many people are not familiar with. In fact, most people that I see, even professionals, don't use this chord. In fact, I haven't really seen it used a lot by many piano players, so I'm literally giving you one of my inside secrets that I really don't share with anyone, but I wanted to share it with you here on YouTube because like I said, this chord could change your life. Now, it can be used as a passing chord, it could be used as a landing chord, meaning just let it sit there and let it ring out, but it's fairly dissonant, so it's important that you use it in context and that's exactly what we're gonna do in this video. The first thing I'm gonna do is show you what the chord sounds like by itself, then I'm gonna use it in context in a recording that I just made a few minutes ago on the grand piano, just to perk your ears up and say, hey, what's that that's going on there? How do I use that chord? Because it, like I said, it's really amazing the way that it sounds. Let me play the chord for you. Now, Cordy says that's a D major add nine chord. I don't know, not really. To me, it's a diminished chord and it's surrounded by octaves. Let's play a recording that I did just a few minutes ago. I'm gonna play you a couple of seconds of it just so you can hear the chord in context. Let's go and listen to it now. Again, here's the chord. And listen to it one more time. Now, of course, because the chord is so dissonant, you're gonna to wanna to know why it works and what's it all about. Essentially, it's based on diminished chords. So if you take a straight C diminished chord, you get this, C diminished seven. And that's just a chord that's made up of minor thirds. So what you do is you take either of those diminished chords, either this one, or this one, they're really just the same chord. Just goes up in diminished minor third. And you put a minor second just below the lowest note, here. So the lowest note is E flat, put in a minor second. So that's what gives it its dissonance right there. Along with the diminished, and then you put an octave on top of that, on top of the lowest note and you get this. And if you were to play inversions of that, each inversion is a little bit different because this one uses this diminished chord while the next one uses this diminished chord. So if you follow the diminished chords using that pattern, you see how that works? Now, the usage of it is basically like either a diminished chord or a flat seven chord. Let's take an F flat seven chord. So F seven and put a flat nine on top. So it's an F seven flat nine chord. And then of course the top three notes are diminished here. So what do you do with that? Minor second below the lowest note and then an octave above that and there's your chord. So all of these chords work as an F7 diminished chord. You get the idea? Now, of course, there's really only three diminished chords, so that makes it easy. If we were to take a G flat nine chord, our diminished chord is here, take a minor second below, add an octave, and you get this chord. Get the idea? And you can actually pass through those chords.
Now you really wouldn't want to do that unless there was a way to incorporate it within a tune. But if you're, for example, trying to arpeggiate, you could actually do that. All right, just before we go any further in this video, if you like videos like this one, reach below, hit the thumbs up button. It really helps us here at the channel. I really appreciate that. And if you'd like to subscribe, you can always hit the little bell and you will be notified of all the upcoming videos that we're making. Let's get back into it. So there's a lot of usages for it, but I just wanted to introduce that voicing for you and the theory behind it because it really works not just as a passing chord, but as a landing chord. So if we were to actually play the tune again, hear how lovely that is? Now, of course, I'm playing the melody from Cinderella, A Dream is a Wish Your Heart Makes, lovely tune. Now, I actually did it there in the beginning too. I just left out the octave. So here, B flat. And then this is the diminished chord and use it as a passing chord. So I could have played it with the octave. That's not the melody. And then here's the chord. Then three, six, two, five. Now here's an interesting case where you can use that voicing just using the left hand, just take out the bottom minor second. So I'm actually playing the same voicing with this note that's not doubled in the octave. So again, you can use it in just your left hand when you're comping as well. Let's actually play the recording again and see if you can pick out how many times I use that voicing or something very similar to it in the tune. Right there, and there. Talked about that one. there. Okay, ending on a B flat sharp 11 chord, B flat major seven sharp 11 chord, just C over B. Okay, kind of a cool sound at the end. Now I hope that chord really helps you out a lot. Now don't overuse it because of course dissonance that just continues without resolve doesn't really make a nice sound. You have to use different chord voicings, but in terms of a voicing for a diminished chord or a flat seven chord, use it and don't abuse it. So if you're thinking, hey, what a great chord, how can I use that in the context of soloing, especially when I'm comping that chord with the left hand? And the answer is you need some diminished scale patterns. Those patterns are infinitely useful when doing seventh with flat nines or diminished chords, whatever. It's a great video. It's very popular here on the channel. I'm gonna put a link to it right here. You can check that one out next.